welcome to Mr Ridley's Design and Technology. In this clip we're going to look at an actual GCSE paper, we're going to do a walkthrough. The, the paper we're going to look at here is section B, or the part we're going to look at here is section B. Um, if you want to see section A I'll try and put a link somewhere. Um, this is section B, so this is Specialist Technical Principles. Okay, so question 14. Um, it says here, table 2 shows a range of products. And what we've got here, as you can see, is we've got six products. Now, when you, before you answer this question, and it's going to ask you to choose one of these and answer the question on one of these. This is a familiar format across most. Some examples have separate papers, but quite often you'll get this range of materials. Now, if you've covered in your lessons or you've done revision on wood and metal then obviously for wood you're going to choose the baseball bat and metals you might change the screw, screwdriver blade. If you haven't covered electronic devices or done much electronics please don't answer the electronics question. Choose a material that you're familiar with. Um, so I'm going to choose, to start off, I'm going to choose, we've got different, we've got mail packaging, baseball bat, screwdriver, I'm going to choose baseball bat. So we just write in there baseball bat. There's nothing there, you're not getting a mark for that, you're just choosing one of those. And then when we turn over the page we can see the first question and for one mark it says name a specific material of the component of your chosen product. If it says specific material it's really important that you name a material. Please don't write wood because you just won't get that mark. Now if we look at the mark scheme here, and we can see the mark scheme for this question, and we can see there's a grid, and for each of the products, so we've got the mail packaging, corrugated cardboard, we've got the um, baseball bat is ash and hickory, so they're the answers that we need there. Um, I'm just going to go down this slowly, if you want to stop it you can. Um, we've got the screwdriver blade, the drinking cup, which is obviously polypropylene, um, the gym wear, there's a range of fabrics that that could be, and last of all, we've got the um, electronic device with the LCD or LED display. So I'll just go through those. And obviously, if we go back here, and we can see that the material that we can um, put in here for the answer is ash or hickory. OK, so we can see here that we've answered this question. So we've picked one of those specific materials, ash. We've named one property, so we've said ash is durable. I've named the material there. And then 14.3 says describe why the property is needed for the product to function properly. So just why is that material good for that product? For these, you need, it's a two mark question here. We can't just put one word. We need to put an answer. So I said the bat won't break. So we've said it's durable, which means it won't break or be marked by the ball impact. If you look quickly here at the mark scheme, and we can see here, and it says um, that even in the specific material it is wrong, if you've got one of the properties right, you get the mark. So it's even if you don't get the exam mark scheme says that even if you don't get that material correct, if you've got this material on this one, you can still gain marks for it. So it's still worth. Even if you can't think of that specific material, then you will get marks for these. So. That is question 14. Okay, and we look at the next question. Next question is 15. And this says, describe two ways in which materials can be stiffened. You may use examples in your answer. So we've got two times two marks. Two marks tells us we don't want a one word answer. We want a sentence. And the fact that it has said, use examples. So we really want to give two, two methods and two examples. So. If we have a look at our mark scheme here, and we can see our mark scheme here, and the mark scheme says two marks for uh, two simple points of exclamation or one clarified in greater detail. Um, so we've got examples here of bending, a boss, fillets, folding, uh, interfacing, and we're going to look at these two. Sorry, we're going to look at these two in the, at the bottom here. If we look at those, we're going to look at lamination and webbing. Um, so we're going to pick those two for our answer. There's the exam mark answers there. So let's look at these two answers then. So first of all, we've got lamination. So lamination 
it says building up material in layers to form a composite construction such as plywood. So if we look at this plywood here, we've got a piece of plywood and we can see it's laminated. Lamination means building up layers. So if we took something like these pieces of pine and we glued them together with PVA glue, clamped them, they would become much more stiffened, they would become laminated. So the first one we've said is uh, to form a composite, which of course is plywood, and there's our example. So we've got our two marks there. Next one is webbing. So if we look at this, or if we say additional material added to injection molding as webs to an injection molded power tool shell. So here we've got, I hope you can see this, an injection molded power tool shell um, from a, a, a mini tool. And we can see these lines in here. We can see these parts here. This is all webbing. So that is webbing. You can see it there. And that is webbing. So we've got additional material added to an injection molded. So we've got our example there. So two marks. So that is question 15. Okay, question 16. Question 16 is about standard components. It says table three shows a variety of standard components. We can see the table there. Look at that in a minute. And it says choose a component and complete one row. When you see these questions that quite often have ex questions like this in a lot of exam boards, please always say read the question, but don't spend ages filling out all the ones because you might not know. And again, just like the previous question, we were looking at different things. Look through the question. If you've done textiles, then look at the textiles components. We've got electronics components and we've got kind of engineering or resistant materials components. So just think about the question, choose one of them and answer it. It's three marks. Although it's a whole page, you only have to complete one and it's three marks. So on to the mark scheme and it gives us these examples here. So it gives us a sp uh, split pin, uh, press stud, resistor, hinge, and of course, nut and bolt, um, or set screw and nut. So we will add that and it just says fasten two or more components together. So we can just add that and get our mark. So 16.1 answer is nut and bolt and component function is to fasten two or more components together. So we get one mark there, two marks for that, three marks. You don't, you're not required to fill in any of the other. So just, there's a whole page, but that, you just pick one of those to okay, fill in. Okay, 16.2, explain the benefits of using standard components when manufacturing products. Standard components might be things like ball bearings, might be just screws, might be if you're making a clock project and you bought in those clock mechanisms. Um, what can we say there? If we look at the... Um, mark scheme here it does say look for the reference to the manufacturer so it's not to do with the customer it's the manufacturer there's a load of reasons there I'm going to just pick this first one so um, it says simple explanation you need to have some kind of clarification so because it's two marks remember two marks you don't want a single one answer you want clarification let's have a look at what I've got here so I said the use of many similar standard components across a range of products means they can be bought in bulk and then to just get a second mark I've said resulting in economies of scale. So you can buy lots of them if you have a lot of the same bearing and you buy those in then you're buying a lot of them, you're buying them in bulk, you get economies of scale. Question so there's 17, two marks says, there. Table 4 shows examples of manufacturing processes. We've got six processes here. Um, turning, casting, offset lithography. We've also got flow soldering. I've seen a lot of students when answering this question, flow soldering is an industrial process. It's not soldering in the classroom. And students obviously get this, often get this wrong by drawing a soldering iron and they don't get any marks. It says choose one of the manufacturing processes from the table, use notes and or sketches. If it says notes and or sketches, you must draw notes and sketches. Now, you should have a pencil. Um, you could have a couple of colored pencils, but don't take, it's only six marks, six minutes. So um, we've got an answer here. I've picked injection molding, and we can see there that um, I've 
drawn the um, injection molding I've numbered the hopper the motor the heater um, and then I've just put broken it into four stages plastic granules are fed into the hopper the granules are heated and the screw thread is turned to drive the, the molten plastic forward the the molten thermoplastic is injected into the split steel mold and the plastic cools and the finished item is ejected so there it is and that's the six marks question 18 choose one of the methods or techniques shown in table 5 again this is sort of about manufacturing products it says dimensional accuracy process time registration accuracy and then you need to choose one of these well I'm going to choose the simplest one the simplest one is just dimensional accuracy so you need to write dimensional accuracy in there and then it says describe how your cho chosen method technique is used to ensure quality control so they're all about quality control um, three marks you don't have to write a load um, what I've written here so I've written dimensional accuracy there and you can see it just says um, I'll hold that up this ensures that all parts and components are manufactured and spec exact specifications this means the parts will fit together correctly this can be achieved, achieved by the use of CAD CAM or accurate measurement um, our jigs in production I think that's more than enough for three marks simply put dimensional accuracy is measuring accuracy making things the right size that's all it is so it's a very simple thing really it's just using a technical term dimensional accuracy which just really means the correct size okay so there's the three marks for question 18 question 19 this is the longer form question so you can see it's eight marks it's about sustainability and the environment often the exam board will have the longer question and it does feature this subject um, this is about the six R's reduce refuse reuse repair you should spend so it's eight marks you should spend eight maybe ten minutes on this no longer but it, I've seen students write a whole page here and then not only get four marks so the important thing here is that you um, see how to get the marks and how to answer the question the question says analyze and evaluate how the six R's may help a consumer make an informed decision whether to purchase or not now when it says about the consumer this is not about consumer rights this is about consumers choosing to make environmental choices make an environmental choice to buy something that doesn't damage the environment that's important just because you see the word consumer there it doesn't mean it, it doesn't ref refer to consumer rights okay so before we answer it let's just take a look at the mark scheme because we want to get the seven to eight marks which means it says a fully detailed analysis and evaluation of the majority of the six R's excellent consideration of how the six R's may help consumers so um, and this one says several of the six R's so you can see straight away you need to be able to analyze not just one or two of them to get these top marks um, the, the three to four marks is some of the six R's so we need to be looking at as it says here the majority of the six R's to get that six, uh, six seven to eight marks okay so let's take a look at this and um, we've got this answer here so first of all I've started off with just a general comment so it says the six R's are a framework that helps consumers make more sustainable environmentally conscious decisions um, try not to just repeat the question but actually make a statement yes it does help you so you're going to get a mark there so I've done rethink this um, I've, I've looked at rethink about consumer um, purchasing and consumption habits um, I've give you examples of plastic straws um, I've talked about reuse um, um, and then I've said about applying the six R's now I've talked about applying the six R's maybe maybe I'll leave that there but maybe I should have had shorter answers 
um, and covered more of the six R's. But I, I think I think that would I certainly think that would get you the eight marks because I've been I've given examples and I've given a clear reason at the end or clear by applying the six R's um, there. So I'll leave that there and that is question 19 which is the last question of section B. Okay, thanks for watching Mr Ridley's Design and Technology. I hope you found this useful. If you did, really consider subscribing because it really helps me to grow the channel. Thank you very much.